Hey, how's it going? I'm Rory from Ramatime and welcome back to Satisfactory. This is episode 7 and it's time to say goodbye to this factory. Well, when I say say goodbye, it's not really say goodbye. It's just kind of, we're going to go and start setting up our new home today. So we could just have a quick look around and remind ourselves, yeah, this is where it all started. But what's coming next? Well, I'll tell you. And it's that over there. That is the base for what is going to be the base. And as you can see, it's not a straightforward square. It's got some angles because I need to get away from the house doing square things and back into making interesting looking buildings. The problem I've got is that it takes a very long time to get over here because it is such... Hang on. Is there some... I hear a clicking. Ah. Oh dear. Right, do you mind? I was busy. Yeah, so it's a long way. Um, and setting up is going to use a ton of materials. I need to get some buildings built over here. So I've got to figure a way of allowing myself to easily get backwards and forwards. Now at the moment, I'm using my power poles that I've made. And I'm basically just going like this. And, and this gets me to and from. Oh, that one's scary. Over the void. This gets me to and from the two bases pretty easily. But... Yeah, it still takes a little while. So I've got to have a think about that. So I'm thinking of doing something with hyper tubes. I've got a bit of work to do over here as well. And in fairness, it's not a super easy place to build the mega base because all the nodes around here are impure. There's a few pure mines dotted around the edges. But like, for example, just here we have four impure iron nodes. Impure, impure, impure. And impure, which might seem at first glance as well. It's a bunch of impures. I don't really want that. However, if I build a dedicated iron factory on here, I need to redo the mass because I can't remember exactly, but it's something like 30 odd smelters to smelt everything I could get out of that if I used a Mark II miner and power shards. And I've got tons of power shards, so that's not a problem. But then I could build like a really cool little iron factory that would deal. I don't know, somewhere around about 600 sheets of iron a minute. Which again, it may not be the hundreds of thousands, but that would more than do, just for like this one. Because I've still got the plan to, you know, to look at the map and find areas and have little, little satellite buildings, like a ca specialised Caterium factory that is just tons and tons of wire. So there's so much to do. But because I've got power over here, I've got a big head start, so I can set up a simple concrete factory, I can set up the iron stuff, I can get the copper going, so I can get everything over here and at least start building the mains of the factory, and importantly, the depot where all the stuff will be collected and taken to. Taken to, yes, where basically the, the storage area where all my bins are going to be, where I can grab whatever I want to grab. Which I'm trying to, I'm trying to come up with a design. And one of the problems is that we're going to have the cloud storage upload thingy that I can't think of the name for, the dimensional bins. And I've got to somehow incorporate them, but I don't really know how they work yet. And yes, I could look it up and go on to another YouTuber and, and, and find out. But I've been kind of trying to avoid that because I want to experience it for the first time myself. So I've got to try and make sure that it's future-proof. It's going to be around this area somewhere. I'm probably still going to expand out that way a little bit, but we'll see. Um, this is where I'm planning for the space elevator to be, and I'm thinking a big circular area that links just to there so that we've got like the main building and then we've got the space elevator next to it. I think that will look quite good, and I've purposefully put it just in front of this little lake so that that can be like a, a nice picturesque bit. And then you've got these which are essentially going to become roads in and out. And then somewhere, I haven't quite planned it yet, possibly back there, is going to be an almighty great train station. So yeah, there is so much to do. So, so much to do. But I'm once again stuck in a quandary as to exactly what to do next. There's all this stuff to do over here on the base, but I also really need to get oil production up and running. Now there is a load of oil over here, which I obviously I haven't been to yet, and it is in this direction. So I'm thinking that perhaps the approach would be to start off by getting an oil foundry. I don't think oil foundry is the right term, is it? Perhaps to start by setting up the oil factory. Where's my power? There. Over here, so that at least I can be making the stuff to keep unlocking the next tiers, ready to start building the next set of elevator parts. 
Hello, look at that. So yeah, there's a ton of oil down here in this area, which is over here on the map. Um, like I say, an area I haven't really explored yet. It's not a particularly nice area. It's a little bit hostile. There's lots of green smelly stuff. But I'm wondering if perhaps I should start just by getting something set up over here, just to give me a starting point with my oil stuff. Over here in this little cave, there are two pure oil nodes. And I think that will probably be enough to get me started and build, you know, quite a cool little oil factory just out here. And then there's other impure nodes and a few normal nodes as well that I could all sort of pull in. I've just got to clear a ton of bees and various other problems from the area. Yeah. So maybe that's where I need to focus my initial starting point is to start building the refinement, the oil refinement over here. So I just need to have a little bit of a think, figure out what's going to be the best way. I'm going to make a quick route to get back home to the existing base easily and then we'll start plotting out what's going to be the refinery well i started something and uh i ended up getting a bit carried away but it's not here it's over here but to get over here i've made something to sort of make it a little bit easier which is this now it still takes a little while because it's quite a long way but i thought let's go on a little journey together Now the route I've made, this is all temporary, just to help me get around the place a little bit quicker. And I was fed up every time I was travelling through this red forest getting attacked by spiders. So now, we just float in our safe tube. And uh, I get there. Now, if you're not familiar with the hyper tubes, the little trick I've done there is you have multiple entrances all together and the... The momentum from each one compounds and then when it launches you through it makes you go much much quicker so that's how I'm kind of moving so quickly. I would actually like to make it so it takes me even faster but I'll do that for the proper proper ones. Um, for now this is getting me over here. So firstly this takes us over to what is going to be the main hub. Whee! Which is right here. And that is our platform for that. And this platform over here is going to be for the space elevator. But I'm thinking I'm going to make it a big circular one. Something so, kind of super interesting. So now though, let's quickly head over to the other place. Which is across this way. And quite a pleasant little journey now. Again, all temporary. I'll do it all properly once I've got the train stations. I'll have hypertubes that take you around to specific points around the map. But uh, for now, this is just getting me backwards and forwards nice and quickly. But anyway, here you will see what I have done over here. Uh, as we come over this one, I believe. There it is. Yeah. So we will come out over here. There we go. And this is what I've built. Basically, over here, we've got six oil nodes. So I have piped all of these oil nodes from extractors down here as neatly as I could do. And I've got it all running into here, into these 16 refineries. Now, as always, this is all just the initial setup. I've still got lots of work to do to make it look cooler and, and so on. But this is what I've set up just to get me over the initial hurdle. And we've got six that are making plastic. Then we've got six that are making rubber. And then obviously all of those are creating heavy oil residue, which then goes into three here, which basically turns that into fuel, which for the time being, I've just got ready to go into these storage containers and then I will build something kind of over here that will package these and turn them into fuel. Now everything is stored in here and the way I have done it is using a sorting floor up here. Because these won't actually be putting out more than a full belt's worth, I've actually just got everything all coming on one belt. So both the rubber and the plastic will come on one belt and then it comes up here and then gets sorted into the bins. Uh, with these smart splitters. So that should actually tick over nicely. Like I say, it won't be mega, mega numbers or anything like that, but 
this is what's going to kind of start us off. But also, just while I was here, I thought, well, let's get some smokeless black powder on the way because then I can unlock all the gun and everything. So I've set up these, which are assemblers that are going to be uh, creating black powder. Just quickly setting up the power on these because I hadn't done it yet. And you see, what I'm doing is I'm bringing in, or I will be when we power it all up, we're bringing in uh, coal and sulfur that gets turned into black powder here so we'll set that on those and then that black powder comes out of there it goes up into this machine and then this is the one that turns it into smokeless powder once we unlock packaging then um, I'll have that turned into um, fuel uh, canisters which I can then have uh, I can stop using the biofuel for um, my jetpack and I'll be able to fly further and faster and higher and all of that now I did put a little bit of effort into the design of getting these over just because I thought it would be fun so that's kind of cool they come from quite a long way away but anyway we need to turn it on now unfortunately I did forget to set it up in such a way that I could easily turn on those remote miners without having to go to them and connect them but I didn't so I am gonna have to go to them and connect them but it's fine because with the power of editing that's that done <laughs> Right, that's now connected up the miners over there. So next is now just to basically turn all of this on and see if I actually got it right. So to do it, all we simply do is connect this pole to this one. And I was wrong. That is not all we simply do. I'm an idiot. All we simply do is connect that one to that one. And now everything comes on. And I don't know if we're, oh, we're going to get we're getting a little bit close now. Yeah, we're definitely getting close to what we're producing. But let's see what actually happens. So, the pipes are filling. Yep. That's good. Pipes are filling up. That's doing its thing. Right, okay. So we should, there we go. We've got plastics coming through. We keep going, there's the rubber. So we've got plastics and we've got rubber coming through. That's really good. They will go up there and they will then get sorted. We should see, there we go. We're gonna start seeing them coming down into these bins. And they should fill these bins up. Yep, that's good, good, good. And I'm expecting to start seeing this. Yep, so this is starting to fill up, which will be going in here. Yeah, and when they then get enough, they'll start making the fuel. We haven't got anything here yet. Why not? So, we oh, we haven't got the uh, sulfur yet, but to be fair, that's probably still on the way. It's got a long way to go, is the sulfur. Here it is. Here it, yep, and there it is. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. It's coming from all the way back there. There you go. You can actually see that's the miner all the way over there. It's coming all that way. How funny. So that'll be getting to there soon. We're getting much better numbers now as well. So that's good. Now the one thing I did actually mean to do and I totally forgot was to set up an awesome sink overflow system as well. So that if uh, we fill up these bins, stuff goes off into an awesome sink. But to be fair, I think we're going to be quite a while. Quite a while? Quite a while. Clearly made a mistake and yes, I have because I have nothing connecting the top to the bottom. What was that? Okay, let's try that again. No, is that... Hang on, where are they going? Oh, oh, I've made some kind of weird loop. Yeah, because I've put it on the back. Oh, what a, what a spanner. So I'm basically, I've just got to stop whizzing around inside the bins. Let's just check that now. There we go. Now it's starting to fill up. So those two should be rubber. Oh, I've definitely done something wrong. What have you done wrong, Rory? The sulfur's there, but these aren't powered up. Good job. There we go. So now those are, that's moving as well now. That's good. Okay, uh, so what's happening up here? So that's... Oh, dear. Yeah, I've done it wrong. This one... Oh, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. The straight on needs to be an any. That's why. So that... There we go. So that way some... There we go. Now we've sorted it. 
and then when it starts making the uh, the smokeless powder that will come into there so let's just have a look yep this is on ah there we go Ooh, there's our first smokeless powder I think I might have underestimated I don't know this belt's very full but so that's gonna go in there so now let's nip back downstairs once I've got some quartz I'll make some signs for it to make it a little bit easier but there we go we've got smokeless powder in there we've got rubber rubber plastic plastic there we go and we are starting to get a little bit of fuel build up inside there there we go oh how wonderful marvelous what a cool little system so as I mentioned before I will turn this into a kind of nice looking factory I will do all of that I just need to get everything running I need to get the rest of the tiers unlocked which we'll be able to do in a minute as well actually because it's mostly this stuff that we're waiting on See, I was thinking I might do something where I turn that into, what do you call them, um, bombs, and split that between them. But how do you make them again? It's not that then. No risks. Oh, they need those. Ah, that's a problem because I haven't got that here. Yeah, so it's going to have to be manual for the time being. That's all looking pretty good. Definitely gonna have a problem though if I don't. I need to start getting that uh, fuel, like something doing with it. Because the other way is there's a recipe that allows you to make this stuff using the this uh, fuel as well. So you can kind of have a few that are making it normally generating that, and then a few that are making it using that. It's where it starts to get complicated, and I'm not ready for setting up complicated stuff like that just yet. But yeah, I've got to keep my eye on these because once these fill up, this system will stop working. But hopefully. Yeah, I should have just about enough to uh, to get started. So we're going to grab a load of rubber, we're going to grab a load of plastic, we're going to take some of the smokeless away, and we're going to go and hop in our hypertube and head back to the main base. Here we go. Here we go, we are just about to get back. There we go. So that's made uh, travelling backwards and forwards a... Uh, an awful lot easier. We're going to have to pack this up soon and take that over there. We're going to have to pack this up and take this over. It's going to be kind of weird moving. Anyway, so fluid packaging. This is the one that's really important. So we need to we need to get this one done. So baboosh. Milestone reached. Avoid the embarrassment of placing liquids in your pockets <laughs> only for them to spread across your suit. Package and unpackage them with the packager. Packaging fluids allows them to be transported in your inventory, on conveyor belts, and by vehicles. For increased, non-pocket related fluid storage, you can now use the industrial fluid buffer. We could do a really cool thing now that I've been waiting for for ages. I haven't got enough motors. The uh, pod's back while I was doing that, so I might as well look at, you know, the next tier to unlock. So we. We've got that, but we won't have enough of those yet. Ah, uh, it's all the same. That's what I was looking for. I wanted the bigger fluid buffer and the fuel power generator so we could make a really cool... Yes, 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 yes. Okay, this is going to be the one that we, we do next. But we need a load of stuff for it because we've got that and we've got that, but we haven't got the other stuff. And you know what? Just for now, I'm going to unlock the thing that I've really wanted to unlock for a long time, which is this. The rifle. <laughs> yeah. Rifle and rifle ammo unlocked. A long range weapon and rapid fire ammunition. Only to be used for the defense or acquisition of fix it property. Conveniently, this includes everything of value on this planet. <laughs> right, I'm actually going to. I've got, I found some computers. That's probably not a good use for it, but that gives me six more slots in my pocket, which. Uh, Pocket dimension Easy. inflated by utilizing numinous gel hydrology channeled through an etheric spigot. Some used to say this as impossible, but the meaning of that word has long since been removed from my dictionary. <laughs> Love it. Right. We have a gun. Looks so good, doesn't it? Like the model is so good. I hardly ever used guns in the in this previously, just because didn't really find the use for it, but to be honest, oh, what do I need? Smokeless powder. I only brought enough. I didn't bring enough to actually make any. 
I only brought enough to make the gun, I didn't bring enough to make any ammo. What an absolute <laughs> Never mind, it's all fine, it's all fine. We will head back over and we'll make the ammo while we're out there. But anyway, now I've got um, the packaging facilities to set up. That's got to be my next challenge, right? I've got to figure out somehow how to build a little packaging facility out there uh, and double check everything that it needs. Hopefully it's not too awkward. So interestingly, it's getting really, really close on the power. So I need to do something about my power. Now I've been lucky, it hasn't tripped out yet and that is because of the old biomass uh, system that is still ticking over and acting as a bit of a buffer every time it uh, gets a bit close. That kind of kicks in and keeps it running. But we need to do something. And what we're going to do is we're going to unlock petroleum power. Baboosh! Milestone reached. It is my honor and privilege to inform you that the fuel powered generator, as well as the industrial fluid buffer, are now available. Due to a lack of gold in your sector, Caterium will serve as a suitable replacement to construct the fuel powered generator. Your research into this element was valuable. In fact, you in particular are my most valuable pioneer, but don't tell the others I said that, it would be bad for morale. <laughs> so now I have the power gener the fuel powered generator, and also the bigger, bigger storage for the fuel. I can go and add just a few over in my oil factory, just to keep this ticking over while we continue starting setting up the main base area. But before we can set up power, we need to do a little bit of mathage. Now, you know, there's not a huge amount to figure out here. We've got four of these that are creating 40 per minute, 40 meters squared per minute of fuel. 40, 80, 120. So we're having 120 be made. We are using, yeah, so we're using 10, which means that we've got 111 to do something with. Right, I don't, <laughs> so I've made a mistake here. I've got this pipe connected here, which is doing literally nothing. So we'll just, uh, we'll get rid of that. So I don't know why I had that pipe on there. That was just confusing matters. Uh, and, oh my goodness. Imagine if this is the most simple bit and I'm getting confused. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Back to where we were. So 40 per minute. So a total of 120 per minute we've got to deal with. I think I'm gonna build it up here on this, this here little platform, but one, generator. I don't know, how much does it use? Does it doesn't tell me. Do I have to connect something to get it to tell me? Right, there we go. So one generator is going to use 20 per minute and I've got 120. So obviously that's 73 generators I need. Of course I'm being silly. So it means I need six, but I want to do something fun. Again, this is not, this is, I don't know, I just want to make the best of this area. So I'm thinking like a really tall tower with one generator per floor and pumps going up to each one. I think that would be a lot of fun. Tricky, tricky, tricky. But I'm also looking at what the shape of this building was going to be. And there was always going to be like a, a bit that kind of jutted out here. And it might be sort of better for aesthetical balancing that I build the tower actually over here. Because I kind of made this round bit just to give it, oh, hello, just to give it a little bit of sort of interesting shape. It was nothing that I was trying to make a rude symbol with the concrete, but yeah, originally. I'm not I'm not a child. What are you talking about? You're a child. So anyway, um, <laughs> the generators sit quite nicely in that little gap there, you see. If I think if I refined this a little bit more and made this, this uh, kind of circular area better, we could have a kind of cool circular tower that goes up there. And then by the time all of this area is walled up and glassed up and got all the cool and interesting shapes in it, it should actually be a really cool looking little factory. Even though it doesn't have a huge amount of expandability here, there's still all this area over here we can play with. There's all the area behind it we can play with. Yeah, I think that's what I'm probably going to do. So let's just use a little bit of editing magic and get that done. There. Again, it's only an outline but it's working and it's just doing what it needs to for the moment. So basically I'm taking the feed from this that's being uh, made, the fuel that's being made here, we're taking it up here, we're chucking it down into there to make me some packaged fuel and then the rest is all going into the six fuel generators. And you can see here a kind of rough idea of the shape that this kind of building's gonna take. And if you laugh just then, that's, that's on you, not me. <laughs> but yeah, it's looking pretty good. We are back up to nearly 3,000 megawatts on our system. So again, that's gonna be a nice buffer that's gonna keep us going for a little bit longer while we run around and 
do various changes to this area and make it look pretty. Yeah, I think this building's going to look really, really interesting. I'm, j I'm just, I'm not putting too much effort into the detail just yet because I'm still waiting until I've unlocked a lot more things inside of the awesome shop. But we are getting close on that one. But of course, I started this episode highlighting there was one thing we were going to do, which is something we really haven't done at all. Which is over here, on what is supposed to be the new main base. Yeah, I've literally done nothing for it. <laughs> but as I've said a number of times throughout this playthrough, this is not a rushed playthrough. It's very chilled out. I'm not in any particular hurry. We'll get there in the end. But also, it doesn't help that I'm being massively indecisive. And the reason for that is because if I come over here from over there, we have this huge hole of emptiness with the beautiful red forest just behind it and these waterfalls. And I keep sort of thinking to myself, I should incorporate this. I should make this area the main base. And when I look on the map, it's not horrific because as I mentioned before, I want to make a big circle that goes all the way around and I want a line that goes through the middle and then a few off points that go to specific places. So that's why I still haven't, oh, suddenly become sunset. That's why I still haven't fully committed to the main base yet because I'm still not quite there with where I think it should be but I'm genuinely thinking that I might do this incorporate it into this so it comes out of this area it has some interesting shape I don't want just a big cube it's gonna have some interesting shapes to it and then as it kind of comes out this way it'll lead off into various other different buildings that all get connected by our trains. I think that'll do it for this episode, and we'll have a look at what I could potentially do with that in the next episode, and we'll make that over there a train station eventually. But here I'll need to decide where's gonna be the best place to put the space elevator, which it would be quite nice to incorporate it right in the center of the design, which if I did build it into over this void, you know, that means it would kind of sit probably somewhere around about here. But anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this episode. Quite a lot of fun. We made quite an impressive new start that's not actually that impressive, but it will be, trust me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the, the video. Quick shout out to Owlish George for being the person that comments on the videos. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you very much for that. And yeah, no, if you enjoyed it, please remember, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and pressing the little bell will notify you when I put new videos up. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.